Gift of the Raven Man. A man died somewhere nearby, too near, wasting his last breath on an inaccurate cry that only his killer and Liliana Vest could hear. Liliana hurried away from the sound, putting as many twisted trees between herself and the killer as she could. She grew up walking the tracks of the trail of the Chicago Forest and knew them as well as anyone certainly better than any of the soldiers fighting and dying under the branches now. Even at night, the woods felt like some home to her, with owls and nightgales calling softly among the dark boughs, but the night had forest become a battlefield. The only calls were a scream of dying and a harsh croaks of a raven squabbling over the flesh of the dead. She stopped and listened, straining her eyes for any sign of pursuit, some indication that she's been detected. No human soldier came behind her. She was sure that just one raven hopping and fluttering from the branch to branch behind her, waiting for her to die. Not tonight, bird, she whispered. Josu is depending on me. The thought of her brother delirious with a fever as he lay on a death's door back on his their father's house. Quick in her step, as soon as the sound of a battle faded behind her, if no one else could have raided the forest to find the easiest route that would cure him, then Liliana would. I'm ready, she told the bird. I'll make him well, and together we'll crush these raiders. The raven croaked, don't you laugh at me. She stopped on the ground and picked up the pebble and threw at it. But when she lifted her head, the bird was gone. It was a place stood a man with his features hidden in a shadow of his cowled coat. She threw the pebble away. It tapped the shoulder and fell back to the ground. He drew back his hood and Liana fumbled with a knife at her belt. He was a tall and noble heir, dressed as a suit of black and gold, and showed no signs of his passage through the trees and brambles. White hair crowned his head. Tussled by his hood, the hair at his temple was black and swept back over his ears. His eyes strangely gold, the embroidery of the clothing seized and held her gaze. I'm not, sh I'm not here to harm you, Liana, Bess, the man said. You know my name, she said, gripping her dagger. Somehow that doesn't inspire me with trust. He held up his empty hands. Your father is our lord and general. Of course I know you. You've been following me? Like you, I'd rather lie low in the woods than be up in the headless corpse dangling behind the cor horses of your father's foe. My skin stretched over the shields and my skull dancing through the trees. As he spoke, Liana thought that she heard the hoof beats in the distance. I have to go, she said. But where will you go? The glade. Where is the Isis foot root used to grow? She scowled and how did you how did you know wait used to grow? You don't know they burned it? The raiders? The skin witch did in a circle of ash now where the chant of their rites and raised more soldiers to fight your father. No, Liana said. Turning her head back on the strange man, she ran, headless to the noise that made her tore through the bushes and stumble of, over roots. She smelled the smoke long before she reached the glade and stopped her rush when she saw the light of gleaming embers. The raven ring beat on the air behind her and she turned. The golden eyes stood looking down on the ground. So much death, he said. Lillian dropped her gaze and started, stared at the surprise with her eyes met those dead men lying on her feet. Corpse littered the ground, soldiers in her father's colors black and gold. Some clutches horrible wounds, some carried terrible burns and headless. Their skin flayed off their glistening fat and muscled by the skin watch dark magic. Not one carrion bird flapped among them. And without the Isis root, the man said, your brother will, will be next. No, she cried, I'm not going to let this happen. No, you're not. The steady certain of his voice certainly exaggerated and panic pounded of Liana's chest. There has been another way, she said. More Isis root, another glade. You know there isn't another glade. What are you saying? Liana fought the urge to stop the inferring man. You know another way to save Josu? What is it? The man pointed in the direction of the glade. She turned and looked into the trees, where a dim glow of embers smoldered in the darkness. His voice was right behind her, his breath in his ear. You know. But she didn't know. For years, she had studied faithfully at La Lady Anna's side, memorizing the healing properties of roots and herbs. Learning the sign of symptoms and hundreds of illnesses, the best treatment for dozens kind of wound, Isis root was only the possible cure. You said the glade was burned and the roots gone. You know more than that. All of her studies, her lesson in the daily routines of crushing herbs and mixing potion, nothing else suggested a possible cure. Unless she murmured, you know. Of course, she nearly jumped out at the unexpected thought. Over the years, she had expanded her studies beyond the Lady Anna could teach, dabbling in the magic that took more. Directing a potion of life and death, all in the service of her work and healer, of course. She knew the magic could turn even burn and show Isis root to cure for Josu, at least in theory. But how did he know that? I'm not ready, she said. I have so much more to learn. I'm sure Josu will wait when you have completed your studies. 
Liana swore violently under her breath and pulled away from the man, taking a few steps closer to the burnt blade. Glade. He followed her, speaking right into her ear. You can't afford to wait, Liana Vest. You know enough now. You are already a great mage, although you won't admit it to yourself. And you'll be a greater still once you embrace your power. Her panic changing, turning into a heavy rush of excitement. She was powerfully yet always hidden her forbidden knowledge away, afraid of her sister. To embrace the damn two consequences, she had to admit that the forbidden things exulting in her power sounded like fun. She wheeled on him, planting his head on his chest and pushing him back. How do you know so much about my magic? She could feel the magic surge inside her. The chills prickled and death approached. I suppose both of us is more than what we've seen, he said. Lilian has always known it. She was more so much more than anyone could ever seen before. And now she would prove it. She felt something inside her break free, like a dark flowering blossom in a deep swamp. The spell came to her mind, weaving together a deeper, a desperate, terrifying plan. Yes, the man said. You see it now? Isis Root is a powerful, cool, powerful cure in a safe course. He, you know a mightier one. She did. She did realize with surprise, stretching out her senses, she felt a power and brood and all of her rot and decay of nearby bog. She drew the mania into herself with a grim smile, only vaguely aware that the strange man had vanished again. With each step forward, the power had been broken free inside her, seemed to blossom a little more. Solidifying her resolve, it propelled her, urging her to embrace her strength. A dozen places a dozen places will stop will blossom a little more, solidifying her resolve. To be continued on the next episode.